to part two of my interview with Steven Toblowski. Enjoy! Did you know when you were making the movie that it would be so classic and such a great hit? And it still plays well with audience today. I mean, I was at the Groundhog Day the other day. It was like constantly playing. Um, <laughs> with, and the themes are like so universal. Um, were, were you expecting it to be such a big hit? No. And you know what my theory is? This is not scientific, but one of my theories as to why this movie does endure. And that is because it was so cold when we shot it. We <laughs> shot it, when you think about it, style affects spring and summer clothes more than winter clothes, right? In the winter, everybody's always wearing just overcoats and scarves and big yeah. hats and gloves. So the, the style of clothes never, th that's the problem with a lot of movies. They go out of style and the hairstyles go out of style. Yeah. But with Groundhog Day, everybody's all bundled up. So it pretty much looks as if the film could have been shot this year as opposed yeah. to 30 years ago mm -hmm. because it was all winter and cold uh-huh and um you have been in so many movies and tv shows um was there a project or collaboration that standed out the most to you um for in your career oh gosh there's so many uh mississippi burning i learned so much on that movie i guess i would say the the projects that I remember the most or when I learned the most. So I learned a lot from Alan Parker, who is the director on Mississippi Burning. Mm -hmm. I, I was there originally to work about four weeks, but I had one big outdoor scene that required a couple thousand extras. And so you couldn't shoot that at night. You couldn't shoot that scene unless the weatherman said, you are, I guarantee you're not gonna have a thunderstorm. And we were shooting in the South, in Alabama, in Georgia, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And so it was very difficult because during that period of time, there are thunderstorms that roll through all the time. Uh -huh. So they changed my contract from being uh, like three, four weeks to running the entire film. So I was going to be there the entire time and out just to wait just to wait until they could get a guarantee to shoot my outdoor scene. And Alan Parker came to me and said, while you're waiting, would you like to follow me around and watch me do what I do to see how people direct a movie? Oh, wow. And I said, oh, sure. Yeah, sure, Alan. So yeah. for the next several weeks, I followed him around and uh, I got such an enormous education. And it, it took... It took such a while for me to realize what a gift Alan did because I thought, oh, well, all huge world famous directors just have little actors tag around with them and teach them <laughs> everything about filming and how you're going to film a scene and how you're going to do sound and sets and makeup and the works. When I came to the opening of Groundhog Day, mm -hmm. standing in front of the theater was Alan Parker. He was coming to see it. And I ran up to him and hugged him. And I said, Alan, I'm such an idiot. I had no idea what a gift you gave me. I got to thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking me around and showing me so much. I, I just didn't appreciate it at the time that that's just something that doesn't happen. He pushed me away and says, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> but you better be good in this movie. Yeah. You know? And so he came in and watched the opening of Groundhog Day. Wow. Uh, Great man. So I learned a lot from Alan Parker, learned a lot from Rid Ridley Scott when we did Thelma and Louise, mm -hmm. learned a lot from him. So you, you, the projects I really enjoyed the most were the best uh, learning, learning experiences. Yeah. And um, what was the most challenging role you have played? Yeah, Memento, where I played Sammy Jenkins. And the reason is not that the role was that big. I didn't have any lines, really. I had just a few. But I had amnesia in the movie. And oh. I didn't realize until I was on the set shooting how difficult it is to play a part with amnesia because part of being an actor is you have to have one part of your brain that is acting in the moment. Like right, right. now, I'm looking right. at your face, I'm looking at your eyes, and I'm imagining what you're thinking. Yeah. Because it... Uh, I adjust my response to what you're doing. And then the other part of your brain, you are remembering everything you do because 
they're going to move the cameras and you're going to have to repeat everything you did mm -hmm. and your hands and your everything has to be the same so it matches when you cut yeah when you have amnesia you can't remember and you don't know what's driving you through the scene mm -hmm. and i found myself very much in a scary situation of not knowing how to get through a scene while we were shooting Mm -hmm. realizing that's what we were going to do. That was the most challenging and the most difficult. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I th thank goodness for Chris Nolan. I, I was, he's a great director too, so I learned a lot from Chris. So yeah. uh, that was that was a difficult experience. Yeah, and I read, I read but like a book before. I was like a summer reading project for school and we had to read a book called Restart. Um, and it was a boy who, like, I think he, he fell off a roof, a roof and oh. got amnesia because he hit his head. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's terrifying. A amnesia is terrifying. I had amnesia uh, earlier in my life, what, what you would call a medically induced amnesia. I, I had a surgical procedure, and the anesthesia they gave me gave me, uh, you, you know, after I had it, I, I couldn't remember. Oh. I couldn't remember. I, I had amnesia for about three or four days. So I had the experience, which always helps as an actor, yeah. of what it's like to have amnesia. So I was able to carry that into Memento, but it's a scary feeling. Yeah. Um, and you also write, direct, and do so much more. Um, anything you haven't done yet that you would like to do? Oh, wow. Well, that's the problem because the things that you haven't done, you don't know they're out there. You you know 100% of what you know, and you sometimes make the mistake of thinking that's all there is to know. For example, uh, I never knew I would like riding horses. Yeah. And my wife uh, was an equestrian when she was young, and so when we got older, she wanted to start taking horseback riding lessons, and I found out I loved riding horses and not only that i was kind of a natural at riding horses and <laughs> i had a horse and we won several uh event, several tournaments uh yeah. and and i and i just loved it but i never knew i was going to love it beforehand so i'm always i guess looking for the next thing mm -hmm. that i never thought i would love that i don't know anything about that excites me <laughs> if you then if you weren't an actor like when you were little was there anything else you wanted to be Oh, I wanted to be a geologist. Ooh, I, I wanted to be a ge In fact, I, I uh, took geology in college. Mm -hmm. I loved geology. I collected rocks. I loved the idea of the tectonic plate shifting and, and how you could tell a lot about the earth from um, looking just at the rocks and the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you know, there. I love mysteries. Yeah. And, and geology is uh, a lot about mystery and a lot about solving mysteries. Yeah, I actually just, um, I always loved like crystals and rocks too. So actually for Christmas, I got this like break open 10 geodes um, set. And um, I actually just did it a week ago, um, like like last Friday. And I did it like in my driveway and I was like using like a hammer to like crush it open. It was so fun. It was so cool to see what they looked like that after that. Yeah, yeah, it, it it's amazing. There's uh, there is a feature in. We have friends that live in Albuquerque, and we are driving through the desert there. And there's a feature there called the Great Unconformity, and that is, you could tell how old the Earth is by which rocks are exposed. You know, this is when that area was under the ocean or or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there is an area outside of Albuquerque in which there's something like 200 million years that are gone. So oh. you have certain rocks here and rocks right above it are came 200 million years later. And it's like, what happened? Where <laughs> did it go? What, what happened in that period of time? And that's one of the great mysteries uh, that scientists are working, you, you know, but it's, it's the questions always uh the questions motivate more than the answers uh-huh and um so here's a quick little game that i made i'll explain oh, dear. it 
quick. So it's okay. called it's called rapid fire. So basically, okay. um, they'll, I'm gonna ask you ten questions, yep. and um, basically you'll have to respond as quick as you can to it. Got it. Got okay. it. Ready? All right. Three, yep. two, one. Favorite vacation spot? Uh, Iceland. Favorite cereal? Uh, Cheerios. Green or blue? Green. First animated character that comes to your mind? Superman. Um, football or baseball? Baseball. Least favorite vegetable? Uh, read that again. Least favorite vegetable. Oh, least favorite vegetable. Um, uh, what what's the one with the the string? Oh gosh, see, I'm killing my time. Yeah. Least favorite vegetable, I'll say is. Uh, uh, but I love them all. <laughs> oh, gosh, this this is so hard. Least favorite vegetable. Uh huh. I love all the ones people hate. Uh, I'll I'll I'm so I'm so sorry. I'll say salad. No, I'll say iceberg lettuce. Okay. Um, boat or train? <laughs> train. Sunset or sunrise? Sunrise. <laughs> Favorite restaurant? <laughs> Favorite restaurant? Um, Young Blood's Fried Chicken from my childhood in Dallas, Texas. Wow. Um, and if you could pull one life lesson from this last year, what would it be? that even in the worst of times, there are unexpected gifts. And that was my last question. Well, that was a very good answer. I wanna thank you um, so much again. I had so much fun talking to you. And um, it was a lot of fun and you and I learned a lot from you, so thank you. Thank you, and I'm gonna be thinking about those vegetables all day today because <laughs> we have a vegetable garden, and I love them all. I love them all. Well, I actually love vegetables too. A lot of my friends and a lot of people don't really like vegetables, but I actually love vegetables too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. This was this was very lovely. Well, bye. Thank you so much. Adios. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Mr. Tabalowski, for sharing your stories and bringing your amazing characters to the screen. And now, before we search it up, here's a quick fun fact. Did you know that Bill Murray was bitten by the groundhog twice when shooting the film? He had to have anti-rabies injections because the bites were so severe. Wow, that groundhog must have been angry. <laughs> and now it's time to search it up. Let's see. Oh, Harold Ramis, he directed Groundhog Day and four episodes of The Office, which means we're gonna be circling back to The Office. Well, see you next time to talk about The Office.